Right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. Today we're going to take a look at shot plays off base runs. Did a virtual clinic, the first part of our 10-part uh, virtual series through play fast football with Noel Mazzone last night. Uh, he talked about game planning, he talked about call sheets, practice plans, how to build your practice plan, quarterback uh, drills and fundamentals, and you know he also talked about how to have shot plays off of base runs, so we're going to look at that all right, today. Check out some of our partners, Game Strat, Sideline Replay Company. We use at Bishop Kenny High School. I've used them the last five or six years. If you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, make sure you check out Game Strat. Dome Headwear, which is a company we use, our hat company for uh, Play Fast Football, Bishop Kenny High School. Completely customizable, build your own hat, fitted, snapback, Velcro, change the build, change the style, change the panels, change the colors, your logo, whatever you want. Every hat has a story. Make sure you check out Dome. Baker Sporting Goods, company we use for our coaches' gear. All right, sideline gear, practice gear, player spirit packs, our uniforms are distributed from them. So if you want one place, all right, that you can get all of your coaching and players' items through so that you can eliminate dealing with multiple people, check out Baker Sports. They're also big in the baseball scene, not just football cloth. So make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods Just Play, which is the uh, software we use for our playbooks. A lot of our team meetings are done through their presentation mode. I use them on my Patreon site anytime I'm going to talk at any clinics. I use uh, Just Play. They've got some unique and interesting tools where you can quiz your players on game plans and, uh, and playbooks, and you can use videos and diagrams to do that. So check out Just Play. Difference USA, ultimate striking machine. Get thousands of reps without needing a partner. Attaches right on to any rack in your weight room. Don't have to teach anybody how to hold a bag. It's just a player, Difference USA machine. If you want to strike violently, you've got to practice striking violently, check out Difference USA. All right, and then our newest partner, XNO Notebook. I think this is a very uh, uh, interesting and unique way to get your players to sit through meetings. They make custom notebooks, which has your logo on them, and then inside they've got all right, sheets that are already diagrammed, templates that already have linemen on them, hash marks, pages for notes, or, or a side panel for notes. So when we do a lot of our meetings, everything is digital now. Everything's running through your playbook software and iPads and everything else. But the kids sitting in the meeting should, still should be taking notes. Coaches should take notes. So they have uh, customized notebooks that you can make for players. And then coaches, you can have game plan notebooks. So when you do your Sunday meeting or game plan meeting, coaches can take notes. I think it's the best way to learn is to still write things down, take notes, go back and read what you wrote as, as well as listening to them. So check out uh, X and O Notebooks, X and O Notebooks.com. You can uh, completely customize, build, or notebooks for your program, players, coaches. All right. I think it's a, a, a really good, solid way to reinforce what you're doing at your meetings. All right. So Coach Bazone was talking about shots, right? And he said that. They want to take about six shots a game. And as a coach, you really need to probably script in there different shot plays that you have because you've got to remind yourself that you want to take these shots, right? They're specific shot plays where you want to work the ball down the field. And where I think it can be a little bit different than play actions is I think sometimes when we build in our play actions, we might be building in route combinations that are more intermediate in nature. All right, maybe we're trying to hold linebackers that are fitting very aggressively or falling very aggressively. So within our play actions or our RPOs, maybe we're trying to slow down some of the fits of backers. When we're talking shots, we're talking about balls that got to go down the field, right? So one of the easiest ways to do that is to just build simple shots off of your base runs to where you're not really diagramming brand new route combinations. All right, and I'll show you one or two different uh, you know, deals that you can run. But off of your base looks, and especially if you're a tempo team and you're ripping a lot of these tempo runs, all right, off of these base looks, you are now just building in a shot play to get the ball down the field, right? So if you started as a team that was a three by one, uh, 10 personnel team, and you're a zone read person, right? And, and you know, tight zone, inside zone is your go to, and zone read is one of your go to's, and you've got a receiver bubble attached to it, right? And then on the back side, you've got some type of gift or access throw built in so that if you get off coverage, no overhang, quarterback guarantees a five yard completion, you can take it at any time. If that's part of your base run, okay? One way to protect that while also, all right, trying to guarantee that you can push a ball down the field would be taking your base scheme, all right, which would be zone read and you're reading off C-gap defender, all right, I've got over front, 4-2 box drawn up right now, so it would be that defensive end to that side. That's who we're reading off. That's the guy that we're looking at as far as the run game read is concerned. All right, The leverage screen, if we like numbers, we could throw it. If we get to a point where 
we have to read somebody six in a box, one of those guys can't be blocked, so it's going to be the defensive end, right? Well, as soon as we want to make this a shot play, all we're going to do is we're going to lock the backside, okay, and it would be obviously more of a set deal. But now we're going to lock the backside, which means the mic is unaccounted for, so the play action is going to be responsible for the mic. Well, if we're running bubble screens, leverage screens, one of the easiest ways to build shots in is to make these guys stalk and go players. Right? So you protect your bubble screens, you protect your now stuff. So now we've been running these screens. It's part of our base deal. We're a tempo team. These are tempo runs for us that we're ripping, giving the quarterback a chance to do multiple things with the football. So now this just becomes stalk and go, stalk and go with the bubble. And now you do the same thing to the access. And here's the good part about this. You now can protect your, ac at your, your gift access side throws. So now if I was running these hitches and we turn it into a shot play, I'm going to run hitch and go double move. So now I've got stalk and go, stalk and go, and now on the back side I've got the hitch and go double move because I'm protecting the gift route that I've been running. Right. So if i got off coverage, no overhang, I want to run that five yard hitch, well when we build a shot play in, there's no need to turn that into post. Now you could turn it into post or whatever you want it to turn it into, but in order to build it off your base run and protect the things you're doing, if you turn it into double move, hitch and go, now you're protecting the gift throw that you throw in your base offense because this is a play that you're probably going to, the base run, all right? So if you've got zone read with the bubble attached, okay, the base run is probably a play that you're going to run multiple times in the game. The shot play is probably something you're going to do once or twice or maybe once from this formation and then I'll draw it up from a two-back set, but it, it's a deal where the shot play isn't going to be run as often as the base play. Okay, so when we go with zone and rebubble and we know that's a base play, the one time we run the shot play, we're trying to push the ball down the field because we know in our game plan it says take six shots, all right, take, you know, one and a half a quarter, two a quarter, eight shots, whatever it may be, whatever your plan is. If we know we've got to take those shots, now if we build it off a base run, what we're now doing is hopefully we're protecting and slowing down the fit on the leverage screen. We're protecting the gift throw so that guy starts to creep down thinking that you've completed the access on him. Well, now you're protecting it with a double move, right? So the shot play is something that we have designed to push the ball down the field because we know we want to push it down the field X amount of times, but it's also designed to protect the base run, right? So it's got to protect the perimeter blocking side, but at the same time, it's got to protect the gift access side. So we're building in a way to protect the leverage screen side, while we're also building in a way, all right, to protect the gift side. So then, you know, in, in, in it, the, the other simple way, if it's part of your base deal, would be if you're in two back, a lot of the times you're probably going to similar play, just change the presentation. So now you're pushing the back, you're running your inside zone, tight zone theory, right? You're still reading that, and now you're going inside tight zone there, and you're going with the back pushed running the screen. All right, so you're going with the back pushed running the screen. Well, a lot of times when you do that, if you're facing a post safety team, all right, or you're facing a team that can change leverage and all of a sudden they throw the nickel, all right, so if you're playing a post safety team and now they want to put the overhang down, rotate the nickel outside, and now the free safety is going to spin to the middle, well, you can do the same thing, all right, you're going to throw your comments, and when you throw what Noma Zone calls the comment screens, now we're going to be out here blocking that, all right, and we're going to be reading the end, and we're going to be looking at end squeeze and I pull, can I throw the, the, the fast screen out to the back, all right, all the things that you're building into your tempo world. Now over here they've got that overhang, I don't really like the access, I don't like the gift, it's not guaranteed, all right, they're playing eight man front, single high defense, so now I don't think I've got that, okay, so that's part of our base run, it's part of a two back structure, it's built in that way, well now maybe one of the ways we can protect this all right, is we can take the outside receiver to the post, 
the inside receiver to the wheel, okay, and again, we can do it off stock principles, all right, so we can do it off of stock principles, so we show the stock, take it to the post, show the outside leverage to get the shoulder on the stock, take it to the wheel, all right, and now what we're doing, gift and go, hitch and go, now what we're doing is we're trying to get ourselves a shot play built in, all right, get ourselves a deal where we are off of our base run, we are taking a shot down the field, I know the ball is going down the field, but I'm trying to protect the base run by slowing down the fit to the screen, right? So if we're running and, and we're pushing the back, and that's part of our deal in our zone read theory, how can we protect that? Well, one of the ways we can protect that is by building a shot in off the base run. The shot is built in so that if they are aggressively playing the screen and, and we understand the coverage structure and we build in a shot that we think can push the ball down the field, all right, here or here, that's why we're calling the shot play. But if the shot play effectively slows down how they play the fast screen or the leverage screen and it helps cover up and protect the gift, so now the gift gets a double move, all right, well now we're protecting the gift side, the access side, we're protecting the double move, right, and now we're protecting the front side push screen, all right, fast screen, whatever, you know, Coach Mazzone calls them comet stuff, whatever you call it out there, we're now protecting that component by saying we can go by you, we can show action and run by you, we can run post wheel however we want to do it, okay, but now we're trying to slow down the leverage of how fast they can play the fast screen, all right, and we're trying to make the blocks out here easier for these guys, right? So what we're doing is we're building a purpose in. We're building shots that can go down the field. We're trying to push the ball down the field off of our base runs. So I think a lot of times, and I used to be guilty of this, I would always build in play actions. They would look like our run action, all right, but then the route combinations were always a little bit different to you know, obviously we're trying to attack different components of the field and we're doing different things that we think are going to be open. And again, if it's a play action world to slow backers down and maybe I'm going play action to pull them up and throw the ball over the top of the void that they leave, all right, to me that's a little bit different than building shots. Building shots means it's going to be off of run action, but at the same time, it's balls that I want to go down the field. The quarterback knows that these are shot plays and I would talk to them if we had, all right, like uh, during the week in meetings, if we had a list of our shot plays and we listed what they are, my quarterback needs to know what those are so that when I call them, he knows I want the ball down the field, okay? Now, if he ever has to end up getting down to that check down swing because of how they play it, that's fine, but he knows that I want to get the ball, maybe if it's the coverage is right, I want the wheel to be the first look, I want the post to be the second look, and then the ball can come down here third. Or if they're rotating strong, all right, I might want the double move out here to be the first look. But the quarterback knows within the shot plays that ball wants to go down the field. I want it down the field. That's why I'm calling it, right? They're giving me a box that I think I can block six on six or whatever it may be. I want to push the ball down the field with maximum or at least the numbers in protection for you to be on your feet because you can't throw shots from the quarterback on his back or running around for his life. He's got to be upright on his feet. So the shot should be designed where you can block everything that they have, all right, available to send, and at the same time, okay, you can push the ball down the field. All right, now obviously if it was eight-man front, I'd have to worry about them bringing four weeks, so that would have to be something that I study. Do they bring four weeks? Can they bring the might or the will and the weak safety away from this side? Because now that might make it a little bit tough for me to pick up. But my back, I could always, if I knew they were a four-week team, I could always have my back kind of scanned where off the inside zone fake. If the mic isn't coming, I could peel my back there, and now I know I can pick up four from over there. Because if they're bringing four from this side, the mic's probably not coming, all right, unless it's some exotic four from the weak side, all right, um, replacement blitz where the end drops and the mic comes. But we should be able to sort that out because on this side, you're probably only getting two guys rushing away from the side that they're bringing forth, right? So that would be a game plan deal. But the shots are taught to the quarterback. 
taught to the receivers, all right? And the easiest way to do it is to just build it off of stock and go stuff. You can build post wheel if you want to, okay? But the easiest way to do it is just to have shots built in. We used to call them, um, when we would do it, and these were not action, these were not actions off a of base run, but the theory is basically the same. If we were a now screen team, all right, so if we were some team that liked to throw now screens, which we used to, all right, when I was calling offenses, we would carry now screens, right? So if we were a team that carried now screens and said, we want the ball to our best players in space when we get a chance, if we were throwing like now ones out here and working stalks and trying to push the back out there, we used to call them fox plays, all right? And fox plays for us were fake the now and, and throw the go ball of the wheel. So if this was now one and, and that's how we blocked it, we would just now one fox meant fake the stalk, run the go ball, okay? Fake the stalk, run the go ball. Now two fox, if now two was bubble or back out, stalk, now two fox becomes stalk and go off of that. Now, again, that's not a shot built off a base run, but what it is is it's a shot built off the blocking scheme that we use in the um, quick screen game, now screen game, bubble screen game. So it's built off of a base play for us, and a lot of people would tell you that an hour of bubble is an extended part of your run game, right? So what it is is it's built off of something that we do in our base system to attack how they're playing that, and if anything, all right, can we slow down the trigger of those nows and bubbles? So if they're triggering those, can we slow that down? While we're slowing it down, we're also, though, working on our philosophy of our shot menu because our shot menu tells us that we got to take six a game. Whether that be at certain times, certain field mark landmarks, like, you know, some guys have alerts or they have fire alarms, or if we get an explosive play that gets the ball inside their 40, the next play's a shot. Whatever your philosophy is, if you know that you're trying to take six shots a game, well, when you build it in this way, off your base runs or protections to now screens or extended run game stuff, what you're doing is you're building shot menus to try and get the ball pushed down the field, but at the same time, you're protecting your core plays. All right, so you know, your, your shot plays don't always have to be newly diagrammed things. They can be shot plays built off your base plays that try to push the ball down the field, but also protect your base schemes, right? Because at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. Our base runs, our base schemes are probably things that we're going to do more often. So we need to protect those so that we can continue to do them, all right? So hopefully this video helps you guys understand a little bit about shot plays off base runs. Um, again, we've got the Play Fast Virtual Clinic series going on. There's going to be 10 speakers all the way through July. So we've got nine speakers left. The next one will be on March 30th. We've got a couple really good guys lined up. Like I said before, I've got uh, some quarterback stuff lined up. I've got uh, some strength stuff lined up, some tackling stuff lined up, um, some defense and linebacker play lined up passing game with an offensive coordinator. So got some really neat things lined up. We got nine left. What I'm going to do now, the clinic pass is going to go from $70 to $65. So you're going to get, if you wanted the last nine speakers, $65 gets you all nine. Every one of these is recorded. The guys that were uh, registered yesterday have already got a link to last night's clinic. So I sent them a link. It goes on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's not public. It's on my uh, unlisted private side so I can share the link so everybody that was there last night has already been emailed the link to last night's clinic. Anybody that registered last night and said they couldn't be there live has already got the link all right, to the Noel Mazone clinic last night. So we've got nine more coming up all the way through July. Uh, you could do it speaker by speaker, $10 a piece if you wanted to be part of the entire season. And then this way, if you couldn't attend live or you didn't know what your schedule was two months from now, if you've already paid the season pass, you know every time we do it, you'll get the link as soon as we record the video. So email me, sting8740 at gmail.com if you are interested in the season pass. Next speaker will be on March uh, 30th. I have not announced who that speaker is, but there will be a speaker on March 30th. I appreciate everything you guys do for me. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. All right, turn those notifications on, ring that bell so you know every time we do a video, every time I go on YouTube Live, all right, thumbs up, thumbs down. If you like it or don't like it, it helps me with how I present. 
leave a uh, leave a message. I like to interact with everybody in the community on the message board. Uh, if you leave a message, I almost always respond to it. If it's a message about a video, I try and do as many of those as I can. All right, so thanks for everything you do for Play Fast. Thanks for checking out this video. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I will see you guys next time.